Hey guys, Sebastian here with another Cardano update. This time I'm going over the April 5th technical report. Uh, so to start off, uh, first we're talking about uh, the exchange onboarding support. Uh, so mostly we're talking about the documentation of uh, version 1 API and just API uh, version 1 in general. Uh, so as we saw in the last week's report, this is like a, one of the main things they've been working on. Uh, and we've got quite a few updates uh, on here. So first they're saying the documentation has been completed. Uh, so you can see this in this pull request right here, exchange documentation. Uh, and you know, if you go to the uh, actual pull request, you can see the entire document on how exchanges can onboard onto this. So this documentation has been merged, maybe not completed, maybe they'll make some more changes to it, but the, you know, at least the initial ver version is done. Uh, Next one, they're talking about the new use cases uh, that they're adding to the documentation. So this is talking about this pull request, which is not done yet. Uh, but you, as you can see, all the check boxes are filled out, so it's almost done. And essentially what they're doing is, uh, I mean, if you haven't seen the new API, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, so they're adding like example use cases and stuff like that to the UI uh, to make it more comprehensible. Uh, they also regenerated the UI, so we'll talk about this a bit later. Uh, so if you don't know, like uh, this uh, web version I'm showing you right now, this is hosted on Cardano Docs, which is in a separate uh, GitHub repository called, you know, Cardano Docs. Uh, so they made the equivalent, like a uh, pull request on here to update the docs to include some of the changes that they've made. And uh, they're also talking about the API test coverage, uh, which I believe I have uh, somewhere down here. Maybe not. Huh, that's strange. That seems to have disappeared on me. Uh, but they had the, uh, trust me on this, they have a pull request. Uh, possibly not the thing they're referring to here, uh, but uh, referring to uh, integration testing for their API. So they haven't finished it yet, it's, it's here. And I, I think their pull request uh, contains some of the integration tests, uh, but I'm not sure how much they intend to do. Uh, dev gods for exchanges, you just saw this. Uh, one thing that's interesting, they're talking about creating a Slack channel for exchanges. Uh, so this is kind of just like an interesting insight onto how IOHK is operating. Uh, because we knew earlier, uh, back from January, is that any exchange that is onboarding onto them as like an early, uh, how should I say, like a, if, if the exchange is keen, on getting uh, or ADA listed, then they will get like a 24 seven support or like, I forget if it's 24 seven, but something like a, a special hotline to talk to IHK to get support in case anything goes wrong with the exchange. And so uh, I'm not, we're not sure how that uh, hotline was set up, maybe through email, maybe through on call, I don't know. They're saying that now there's like a Slack channel for exchanges to uh, be a part of, so they can get support from IHK for any uh, issues they may have. Next one, they're talking about finalizing the wallet v1. Uh, so I think uh, there's this other section uh, I have here that I didn't mention, but it's kind of like a related to the exchange onboarding. Uh, so before we go into finalizing version v1, we'll kind of go over this real quick. Uh, so you remember I've been showing you some implementation of the API v1 feedback. Uh, they had like a few checkboxes. This is this is now uh, merged. So they've taken all the feedback into account, made all the fixes, that's done. Uh, they're also talking about uh, collecting missing V1 endpoints, uh, data compared to, <coughs> sorry, V0 endpoints. And uh, this is also like uh, within the greater scope. Uh, so as you know, they've had uh, two versions of, of the API. The first one they ever released was version zero. And this is the thing they've been working on recently is version one. And so they're trying to make sure there are no differences between the two versions, or at least, uh, I mean, there'll be differences, but they're trying to make uh, no differences that were not intended uh, to make the transition easier. So that's what this is about. This is it for uh, the API v1 addresses and point to use the v0 logic. They're also finished the ape endpoint for uh, address meta information, which is something exchanges had been asking for. And, 
Oh, I have this one open twice. Interesting. Yeah, so that, that's kind of uh, some of the stuff they've been working on. It's kind of like an a greater scope of exchange and the API work. Uh, another thing they did is uh, changes to the NTP protocol, uh, network time protocol. So you saw this in the previous weeks uh, where they did some refactoring of this and uh, also changed some settings. Uh, this, I mean, this had two things. One of this is refactoring. Uh, you can kind of look into this here. It's hard to say because it's, it's like a crossed out. Uh, but if you look into the code, you can see exactly what refactoring they're doing. It's, you know, not anything super exciting, I guess. Uh, but just be aware of this. Uh, but the other thing is that they removed some settings. And the goal of this is uh, they wanted to have an endpoint such that uh, you can get... Uh, information about the time delay uh, with your wallet between like the wallet and the actual time and all this kind of information which is why they changed the node info response to be more flexible so they can add more information about NTP in the future in case they want to make this uh, endpoint uh, you get more information about uh, the internal time the wallet is using and this kind of information so these two are kind of connected in a sense and that's what they're talking about when they say uh, they're doing network time protocol refactoring. Uh, yeah, they're talking about the integration test again. Oh, that's the way it went. So it must have like uh, gone here. I thought it was like a step in the higher section of the tabs, but it's down here. So this is some of the integration tests uh, for the API. Uh, so you can check out uh, what they've been working on, but it's still a work in progress. So, I mean, they're working on it, but it's going to take some time for it to be done. And uh, yeah, there's two other things they're talking about here, but there's no, there's like the ID number, but no actual like a uploaded pull request for these. Uh, one of them is collecting missing V1 uh, endpoint data compared to V0 endpoints. I think that the reason this is not uploaded is because it's like a more broad task and it probably has a bunch of subtasks to it. Uh, there's also uh, CSL2405, which includes the fees include option for the API. Uh, there's no pull request for this yet. I'm not sure how much priority this is, uh, but they're uh, talking about how it's, it's like a possibly something that might be coming up. Next one is stateless. Uh, we're mostly talking about uh, paper wall certificate generation. Uh, so we've seen this in previous weeks. Uh, where uh, you could see how the paper wallet generation uh, works uh, from these images. They had the checklist, which they've now done, gone through all of it. They merged the pull request that they've, this is like, is the broader goal of implementing paper wallet. So you can see it's like a mostly done. Uh, Charles uploaded a video on his YouTube uh, that shows uh, the entire process of generating a paper wallet and restoring it. So if you're interested in the paper wallet, uh, how it's going to work, uh, you can check it on this video and they're saying it's going to ship with the next version of uh, the wallet. Uh, similarly, they added a new API to report restoration progress. Uh, so this is kind of linked uh, because the paper wallet is, is, has restoration part of it. It's also something they've been working on uh, for data list. It's like, not really mentioned here, something they're working on n nevertheless. Uh, such that uh, now when you'll do a wallet restore, it'll show you the progress uh, and also the balance as everything gets updated. So this uh, pull request here is on the Cardano SL side. And you can see this is already done. Uh, so they have an equivalent pull request on the data side. So now they're making the UI for this. And uh, we'll see this in the technical uh, report next week, uh, which shows kind of the UI for how this uh, async uh, restoration uh, is gonna work and I think it's pretty exciting because uh, it's been a feature a lot of people have been asking for and now we're finally getting like a very close to completion uh, next up is the wallet backend so they're talking about uh, decommissioning the Cardano SL 1.0 exchanges branch so if you don't know what this is uh, that's okay it's like a, I think I may have closed it actually yeah, I think I closed it. But uh, so I, I can kind of describe what happened here. So if you've been around for a while, you may know 
that uh, back in January, exchanges have been having problems, well, they were having problems uh, because the original version of the wallet was made for like a typical user scenario, which is like, a, you know, a random person wants to like a purchase some ADA store in their wallet and this kind of stuff. When they gave uh, the exchanges the go-ahead to start uh, trading ADA on uh, an exchange, they noticed that there were a lot of performance problems a lot of features were not exactly set up the way the exchanges wanted. So they created this special branch uh, where they would add features uh, for exchanges to help them process stuff faster and all this kind of stuff. And this is kind of the history behind it. And as you, as I showed you earlier, now they've got a fancy V1 API, everything's like much better, everything's running much smoother. So they're trying to like a decommission this old thing that they had running and try and get everybody to move on to the new system. And they're talking here about like some problems they've had uh, getting people to do the conversion. Uh, but nevertheless, this is kind of like a, one of their goals. Uh, so the other thing they mentioned is this right here where they're talking about uh, form formal verification of the wallet backend. This is something that they've been working on for a while. Uh, we saw a few videos about it, we saw some uh, technical documents about it. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what code changes uh, will be coming from this. Because uh, they, like, they, they've had the spec up for a while, uh, but we haven't seen any code for changing to conform to this new spec yet as far as I know. Uh, we're essentially saying that they're, they're uh, working on that. Next up, uh, they're talking about, yeah, the, oh, sorry, before that, they, they mentioned that this is going to take like a few months uh, to do, uh, which is fine. It's, it's expected that, you know, making these big migrations for the back end of a wallet uh, will take some time. And, uh, Yeah, they're still talking about how they're going to approach this. So they're talking about implementing a pure data layer uh, for these wallets, uh, which we haven't seen any pull requests for yet. They're, they're just like, uh, I mean, if you're interested in knowing exactly like uh, all the details about how they're going to push for for this, you can read this entire paragraph, I guess. Uh, but they don't give that many details. Uh, so we'll probably see more details uh, coming out over the next coming weeks and months. Uh, next thing they're talking about is the uh, TLS, the Transport Layer Security Check. So this is also something that they've been working on for a few weeks now, I think maybe over a month now. Uh, for certificate generation, TLS checks, this kind of stuff. Uh, so you can see the server TLS check, uh, that was, yeah, it started like almost a month ago. It's still like ongoing. In the meantime, uh, they added another pull request, this is a different pull request. Uh, for uh, certificate generation. And so what they're talking about in the technical report is that they now have an example usage of this new tool they wrote, uh, uh, Chris certificates. You can see here, they specify in a config file, like uh, we want a certificate by OHK. Uh, you'll have a client with the name Daedalus Wallets, and it'll kind of look like this once you run the tool. So they added this uh, example, which is kind of what they're talking about here. Yeah, here what they're talking about the default data is what they're referring to this uh, generation tool that they've created. Uh, and you know, so I mean, they said they now include the client's name and all this kind of stuff. They're talking about this example they have here. If you've had problems running the uh, wallet, as if like if you try to build the wallet yourself from source, and you've had some issues with their certificate, you may want to look into the certificate generation tool to see how it works. And they also have some documentation that I've talked about before in a previous video where they explain exactly how this uh, certificate uh, handling works inside the wallet, uh, which you also may be interested in reading. Uh, they're also talking about a script located in the data repository. I don't think this has been uploaded yet, as far as I know, uh, but something else is coming. Or maybe this like mistake and they mean like the card down I saw repository and they mean the script that I just showed you. I'm not sure which one it is. 
Uh, next up, they're talking about some issues uh, they've had with the uh, wallet. I think this is like an interesting read if you're interested in kind of like a customer handling, I guess, that IOHK is doing. It's not necessarily like a dev update. They're just saying like, uh, they noticed that uh, as they've been communicating with their partners, uh, there's been some high IO traffic in their wallet and they did some investigation uh, alongside the exchange to figure out what is causing this. Uh, so that's, that's what they're talking about. And I think uh, the problem was an issue with one of the exchanges, so I don't think it's an issue on the uh, IOH case side. We'll see what happens in the future. Uh, lastly, in the section, they're talking about async restoration. So I showed you guys this a bit earlier. Uh, where they're talking about uh, trying to uh, give more information about the wallet uh, state as the restoration is progressing. Uh, so they'll have like a details feature for this uh, coming up, and you'll probably see this in the report next week. Uh, possibly, you know, they, uh, you know, uh, Charles may have another video showing you guys how this works. Because uh, I think the code for it's probably mostly done. I think like just the UI is remaining. Uh, next up uh, for networking, there's mentioned they've uh, made progress on studying the blog verification stack. I'm actually not sure like what this means. What does it mean to study the blog verification stack? If you know what this is referring to, please let me know, but I couldn't find any pull requests or like uh, figure out exactly what this means. For DevOps, we're talking about the exchange for onboard document, uh, exchange onboarding, which so I showed you guys a bit earlier in this video. Uh, Next up, they're talking about uh, ex internal changes to their bug submission flow. So it's like an internal tool that IOSK owns, so we don't really know what they changed, what problems they fixed. Uh, along with uh, internal automation for proposing installer updates on the blockchain. Uh, we don't really know exactly what this is. Uh, Going, going towards, like it may be for the voting center, it may be something else they're referring to, it's like kind of like a not clear uh, right now, uh, exactly what they mean by this. And then they're also talking about the 1.1 uh, hotfix uh, that they've uh, been working towards. So if you didn't know, there's been a w version 1.1.1 uh, that was released, and the main reason this was released was to fix an error related to usernames uh, that had non LAN characters in it. Uh, so as you know, if you have a Windows computer, you'll have a path that's like a C slash user slash your username. And uh, if your username was non LAN, so for example, a Japanese name, Chinese name or whatever, uh, one of the libraries that I was dependent upon uh, would basically not work, it would just fail. And so this is a big issue in the Asian community in particular. So if you ran into this issue, uh, try and upgrade to this uh, Hotfix uh, branch and uh, it should work for you. That's mostly uh, what they did. Another thing, oh yeah. So another thing they said is uh, they up, uh, onboarded the IELE team, the KVM team uh, to their cloud provider uh, and their CI infrastructure. So this has no ex impact for you guys as people watching this video, uh, but it's just like some uh, in interesting insight into how IOHK is cooperating uh, with their partners and how they're trying to reuse some of their infrastructure uh, to use a common stack and cooperate this way. Yeah, lastly, they're talking about efforts to cross compile Haskell uh, projects to Windows using Nix. So if you ever tried to build the Cardano SL code base, you might have noticed that there's two ways to do it. One is with Nix, one is with Stack. So Nix is like a, the quote unquote preferred way, I guess. Uh, I mean, it's the way they would like to move to, uh, but they also have the option to use Stack uh, for Windows. And they've been trying to get Nix to work on Windows and they've had somebody work on this. You can see uh, they have a uh, GitHub project called Nix uh, HS Hello Windows. 
which uh, they've been working on getting uh, the compilation working on Windows. So this is like their first attempt. They did this like a month ago, something like that. And uh, they're continuing to work on this item. So this will not really do anything for you again as an end user, but just for people who want to build this project uh, themselves. Uh, it should hopefully, like, uh, if they manage to get all this working, uh, building the node, uh, should be simply easier. It'll be less of a mess of, like, two systems, uh, both uh, running the same code base. For the K and ILE, or uh, the ELA, they mentioned they're working on the uh, testnet. So I think they mentioned they're aiming for the testnet launch in June. Uh... But there's not really anything like a reporting right now. It's just like a quote unquote good progress, which is say they're doing stuff and it's, it's all progress, but nothing like particularly uh, of interest. It's just, you know, uh, adding more features to uh, their uh, compatibility there with Solidity and this kind of stuff. Uh, that's what they've been working on. So if you're interested in this, you can go check out uh, their repositories for runtime verification on GitHub. And you can see all their pull requests as they're trying to build this like a uh, layer between K and Solidity and this kind of stuff. Lastly, they're talking about uh, Reagan, which I've explained kind of more in detail in previous weeks, which is the system they're using to try and automatically generate test cases. So they're talking about, uh, they're just doing review about uh, how it's been going so far how useful it is and all this kind of stuff. So again, it's just an insight into the internal development process of IOHK. So now we're done this, the done the report. There's a few extra stuff uh, that I just wanted to talk about real quick that we're not mentioned here. Uh, one of them is that they found like an out of memory problem inside uh, the Explorer that they have like a fix they're trying to work on that's like a hot fix and they'll need like a more time to develop like a bigger fix for this. So if you run the Explorer, uh, you may be interested in checking this out, figuring out exactly what the issue is, and uh, if you are impacted, possibly impacted by this. Uh, the other thing is that they've been working on some more benchmarking stuff. So uh, inside the uh, Git repository, if you go on this branch, you can now find some uh, benchmarking tools that gener generate some graphs using the R programming language. So if you're interested in checking out uh, some benchmarking of stuff like uh, mempool and I think some staking stuff in here, uh, you can go check out this branch. You may be able to run these yourself. I'm not sure how hard it is to get these running, uh, but if you're interested, you can go check this out. And hopefully we'll see the results of these benchmarks like uh, later on. Uh, another thing I thought was just interesting to see like the internal development uh, or internal process IOHK uses uh, you may remember uh, when you send when you have a problem with the wallet now, you have the option to send logs uh, to IOHK, and they they said they re received so many logs they need a way to filter them now, and so they added this script that kind of shows you the the way they're filtering. This is like a you know possibly not the best filtering method. Cause it's just grep. It's just like a t plain text search, plain text search. But it kind of gives you an idea of how they're, uh, what kind of logs they're running into, and how they're trying to filter it and bucket them to figure out what uh, issues to fix, how to fix them, and what to prioritize. Uh, next up, uh, additions to the spec. This one they mentioned, uh, I think two weeks ago or something like that. They were making uh, additions to the spec, mostly talking about like uh, rollbacks, how to handle rollbacks, and uh, the effects rollbacks have on the uh, wallet balances and their internal model. So you can imagine, for example, your balance uh, may be updated as you follow a branch, but then there turns out there's a new longer uh, branch. So you like uh, have to roll back, move to the new branch and like our new fork in the blockchain and then follow this new fork. And so talking about how to handle that inside the wallet and how to do that efficiently. And this is kind of what this is about. And that, uh, has been finished and merged into the repository. So if you're interested in reading that out, how they're how they're handling that, you can now go read it inside the wallet uh, spec. 
Next up, they're continuing more work on the networking layer. Uh, this is like a pretty large uh, floor request that does like a few different things. Uh, but if you're interested in like networking, how the networking layer uh, works out, you can go check out this pull request. They've done a few changes to the networking layer recently. Uh, so if you're interested in like uh, how the network uh, operations work uh, underneath the hood, uh, now's a kind of good time to go check it out as they're like uh, working on this actively. And I showed you guys this before, like uh, they're trying to merge uh, all the networking work they've done into the develop branch. So you can go check this out as they're trying to uh, merge all the changes they've done into the development branch to hopefully be included in the next uh, wallet release. Lastly, this is another bug they noticed uh, that they fixed where creating a wallet and the V1 API through an exception after a wallet had already been created and inserted to the database. Uh, so if you hit this issue, uh, just be aware that it's now fixed. Uh, so you just wait until the next release or you can like upgrade yourself uh, to get this issue fixed. Uh, lastly, this is another issue they noticed uh, where the accounts, the wallet accounts endpoint for the V1 API had the arguments switched compared to the V0 version. Uh, so this is like I mentioned in the start of the video, we were trying to hunt down these changes between the V1 API and the V0 API and fix them. This is another one of them. So if you ran into this problem, uh, you know, this has now been fixed and uh, just be aware of that. Anyways, that's it for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As usual, uh, if you want more updates, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, subscribe to YouTube, follow my Patreon, all this kind of good stuff. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys next week.